He came from a family which was very noble, but as we said before, he was an orphan and at the same time he was poor. So a lot of doubts must have been going in the head of our mother Khadija. For example, we can assume she probably said, what will the people think about this marriage? What will my family say about this marriage? What will this man, this 25-year-old man say when someone like me who is in her 40s would like to marry him? SubhanAllah, this happens to us even to this day. Sometimes our brothers and sisters, they think about, you know, I would like to marry this girl, I would like to marry this brother. And we get confused. And really, where should we run to, SubhanAllah, in these difficult times? We have two important things. One of them was utilized by Khadija bin Khuwaylid, our mother. And the other was legislated later on in the Islamic system. The first one is Ashura. Because we know the steps to get married are four. The first one is the glance. The second one is Ashura. The third one is Al-Istikhara. And the fourth one is Al-Khutbah. That the steps to getting married are these four things. To see the person that someone's interested in. To discuss this person with one's family members or wali or close people close to you. Third, to make Salatu Istikhara. To ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his assistance in helping us choose the right mate. And the fourth is the Khutbah. When one makes their intentions known to their intended spouse. Khadija bin Khuwaylid, where she will go now? In this difficult time, making this difficult decision, she went to her friend Nafisa. It's very important, subhanAllah, that we surround ourselves with good friends. So that when we have these difficult decisions to make, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help us with our friends, the believers. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ar-rajulu ala dini khalil. That the man or the woman is on the religion of their friend. So she went to Nafisa and she began to tell Nafisa, you know, I'm interested in this man, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And Nafisa, this is a true friend. There was no jealousy. There was no envy. She was so happy for Khadija bin Khuwaylid and she gave her all the confidence that yes, you can do it. Nafisa, she left Khadija bin Khuwaylid, our mother, and as she was walking through the streets, subhanallah, guess who she met? She met none other than Al-Ameen alayhi salam. The Prophet ﷺ. And she said to the Prophet, Ya Muhammad, ma yamna'uka an attazawaj? O Muhammad wasallam, what is it that stops you from getting married? SubhanAllah, brothers, listen to the response of the Prophet ﷺ. He said, I don't have the means to get married. I don't have the means to get married. Unfortunately, sometimes we fail to realize that is very important that before we get married, we are able to take care of our wife. Because our wife has some rights on us. And one of the rights is spending. And that spending is divided into two according to the Sharia. The first is the obligatory spending. The maintenance, the home, the clothes, the medicine, the good treatment. وَعَشِرُوهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Being good to them. And the second is what we call yani the extra jilbab. Those things which one does to their wife or for their wife to win the heart of their wife, to make their wife happy, to make their wife's life happy. That's the spending which of course is not an obligation. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa his response was, I don't have the means to get married. Nafisa, she responded and said, what if the person who is interested in you, there's no problem about money. There's no problem about these things. Prophet Sallallahu said, Who is that? And Nafisa, she said, Khadija bint Khuwaylid. Our mother, Khadija bint Khuwaylid. MashaAllah. Look at how Nafisa, MashaAllah, has this adab in presenting the proposal of our mother Khadija, radiallahu anha, to the Prophet Sallallahu We took also a ruling from the fiqh here that it is allowable for a woman to make the intentions to a man. Many times we think only the men can make intentions to women and what happens many of our sisters are left out in the cold because culturally it's not acceptable for them to make intentions on a man. But subhanAllah, here we see the best woman Khadija bin Khuwaylid proposing to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he accepted but he said first let me go and talk to my elders. 
And when Khadija bin Khuwaylid was informed that the Prophet ﷺ was good and he accepted this, she did the same thing. And she went to talk to her uncles and her family members and see what was their response to allowing her to marry the Prophet ﷺ. It's an important lesson we take here that whenever we have to make major decisions, it's always good to refer our decisions to elders so that we can get the wisdom from those elders, insha'Allah, and it will put barakah and nur in our decision. The marriage took place at the home of our mother Khadija, radiallahu anha, and it was attended by Abu Talib, Hamza, and Abbas from the side of the Prophet, وسلم, from the bride side of the family, there was Waraka bin Nawfal, who acted as the wali of Khadija bin Khuwaylid radiallahu anha, her uncle Hakim ibn Hazam, and the daughter of Abdul Muttalib Safiya, and a group of ladies from the area where Khadija radiallahu anha lived. The marriage was performed by who? Subhanallah. The first marriage of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was performed by Abu Talib, his uncle. And as we mentioned, Waraka, he accepted on behalf of Khadija the marriage, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa gave her 20 camels as mahr, mashallah. Once the marriage was completed, the entire house filled with warmth and happiness. And there was the playing of the deaf as related by the historians. And Khadija bin Khuwaylid had some sweet which was served to celebrate the glorious marriage of Khadija bin Khuwaylid to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa The home of Khadija bin Khuwaylid and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was full of barakah and full of blessing. And we know that Khadija bin Khuwaylid radiallahu anha she gave birth to all of the Prophet Ali's children except Ibrahim. She gave birth to two of the sons of the Prophet Al-Tahir and Al-Tayyib. And she gave birth to the daughters of the Prophet وسلم, who were Zainab, Uruqayya, Umm al Kuthum, and Fatima alayhim salam. All of these children, mashallah ta'ala, were in the home of Khadija bin Khuwaylid. And unfortunately, we don't have that much information about Khadija bin Khuwaylid radiallahu anha. But look at the children that she raised in her home. And by looking at the children that she raised, we can see what type of woman was Khadija bin Khuwaylid. Fatima radiallahu anha was raised on the hand of Khadija. Umm Kuthum was raised on the hands of Khadija. Ruqayya was raised on the hands of Khadija. And another young boy was raised in the madrasa of our mother Khadija bin Khuwaylid. And do you know who that is, brothers and sisters? It is none other than Amir al Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. Subhanallah, what type of woman she was that she produced such amazing children. Zainab, Fatima, and Ali radiallahu anhum. This tells us, sisters and brothers, that Khadija bin Khuwaylid was the complete package. Because look at the beautiful fruit that was raised in her garden. Radiallahu anha. SubhanAllah, if you want to know the greatness of Khadija bin Khuwaylid, radiallahu anha, look at the famous hadith of the Prophet, وسلم, which is an authentic hadith, when he said, Marry a woman for four reasons. Prophet ﷺ marry a woman for four reasons. For her beauty, for her property, for her family, or for her religion. Then the Prophet said, marry the woman with religion, may you be blessed. SubhanAllah, if we look at the 25 years that the Prophet spent with Khadija bin Khuwaylid radiallahu anha, we can understand why when he was married to her, he married no one else. Because she was beautiful. Because she came from a good family because she was wealthy and because most importantly she had deen. SubhanAllah, thus according to this hadith, Khadija bin Khuwaylid radiallahu anha was a complete woman. Therefore the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa had no need to marry anyone else. Some important events took place in the marriage of Khadija bin Khuwaylid radiallahu anha prior to the advent of the prophethood of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And we take an important lesson here that many times our brothers they say to us, man, I want a wife like Khadija. My wife is not like Khadija. And we say to them, subhanAllah, brother, before your wife can be like Khadija, 
She needs a man like Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So what type of man are you? We look at this early marriage or the early life of the marriage of Khadija bin Khuwaylid to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and we see something very interesting. Because the ulama, they said that if a man, he wants to make islah,